Askewness, or torque, is the annoying characteristic of some fabrics and garments to twist after laundering. As a result of skewing, side seams, sleeves, legs, and other parts of a garment will become displaced, leading to an unsatisfactory appearance. AATCC Test Method 179, Skewness Change in Fabric and Garment Twist Resulting from Automatic Home Laundering. This test method determines change in skewness in woven and knitted fabrics or twist in garments when subjected to repeated automatic laundering procedures commonly used in the home. Washing and drying procedures used for shrinkage tests and other home laundering tests are specified for this method. For some fabrics, the degree of twist in the garments is not solely dependent on its behavior in the unsewn state. It also may be dependent on the manner of garment assembly. Notice that one pant leg on this garment has skew and the other does not. Garment twist is defined as a rotation, usually lateral, between different panels of a garment resulting from the release of latent stresses of the woven or knitted fabric forming the garment that build up in manufacturing during laundering. Twist may also be referred to as torque or spirality. Skewness is defined as a fabric condition resulting when filling yarns or knitted courses are angularly displaced from a line perpendicular to the edge or side of the fabric. Change in skewness in fabric or twist in garment is measured using benchmarks applied to the specimens before laundering. The displacement measured from the original marks is the basis for determining skewness. Two test methods are used for determining skewness. The first method makes use of a square that is drawn on the fabric or garment prior to laundering. After laundering, the distortion of the square is measured. The other method makes use of lines that intersect at a right angle. After laundering, the displacement of the intersecting lines is expressed in percentage skew. Three specimens are tested for each sample to increase the precision of the average. When testing fabrics, where possible, cut specimens from different areas of the fabric so that each specimen will contain different groups of lengthwise and widthwise yarns. Identify the fabric face. Mark the lengthwise direction on each specimen. Whenever dimensional change, appearance, and skewness measurements are required for fabrics, the specimen dimensions can be the same for that used in AATCC Method 124, smoothness appearance of fabrics after repeated home laundering, or in AATCC Method 135, dimensional changes of fabrics after home laundering. In these cases, marking by skewness Method 1 is used. Method 1 makes use of benchmarks placed on fabric swatches or on large panels of a garment. Here, a knit fabric has a 15 by 15 inch square template placed with the vertical edges parallel to the edge of the fabric. The perimeter of the template is marked to define the size of the specimen. Then the specimen is marked with 10 inch pairs of benchmarks parallel to the length of the specimen, and two 10 inch pairs of benchmarks are marked perpendicular to the length of the specimen. Next, the benchmarks are labeled as A, B, C, and D in clockwise direction starting with the lower left corner. A line is then drawn through each of the four sets of adjacent benchmarks so that a square is formed.
Finally, the specimen is cut down to the 15 by 15 inch marks for laundering. When testing fabrics, test three specimens whenever possible. When testing garments using this method, test three garment specimens or a total of three areas of two garments to increase precision of the average. Use the largest panels in the garments. After laundering, follow the procedures found in AATCC Test Methods 124, 135, 143, and 179 for preparation and conditioning prior to testing. After conditioning, lay each test specimen without tension on a flat, smooth, horizontal surface for measurement. Method 1, which uses a square with the corners marked A, B, C, and D, measures the shear distortion of the square by analyzing the diagonals of the square. The analysis of the skewness square requires the measurements of the diagonal lines, and a percent skewness calculation is made from those diagonal lengths. Diagonal line AC is measured in inches and recorded to the nearest one hundredth of an inch. The diagonal length for BD is also measured and recorded. As stated, Method 1 calculates the percentage change in skewness of the displaced square. The lengths of the diagonal lines AC and BD are measured to the nearest tenth of an inch. In this option, the diagonals AC and BD are used in a formula that expresses shear distortion of a plane. The value is expressed to the nearest 0.1% as follows. The difference between the diagonals is multiplied by a factor of 2 and then divided by the sum of the diagonals. This number is multiplied by 100 to give the percentage of skewness. For example, if diagonal AC is 13.70 inches and BD is 13.65 inches, then the percent skewness would be 13.70 minus 13.65 times 2, and this product divided by 13.70 plus 13.65, and this value multiplied by 100, will give 3.7 percent skewness. A positive percent change indicates product skewness to the left, which is referred to as left-hand skew. A negative percent change indicates product skewness to the right, which is referred to as right-hand skew. Marking method 2 uses different benchmarks as compared to method 1 for fabric specimens and garments. Using a suitable marking device, a horizontal reference line is drawn across the width of the specimen and is labeled YZ. Line YZ should be approximately 3 inches above the bottom edge of the fabric specimen or the hem of the garment. If the bottom edge or hem is not straight, draw the reference line perpendicular to the vertical axis of symmetry of the specimen. Place a benchmark A perpendicular to and midway on line YZ. Place one leg of a right angle marking device along line YZ so that the second leg is on a perpendicular upward from point A. At a distance of 20 inches up the right angle marking device directly above point A, draw a benchmark parallel to line YZ. Draw a vertical benchmark starting at 19 inches from point A perpendicular to line YZ to intersect the previous benchmark. Label the intersection of the benchmarks as point B. If the specimen size is insufficient to mark a 500 millimeter 20 inch length, mark the longest available length, which is at least 75 millimeters 3 inches below the upper edge of the test specimen. As described earlier, the second method uses intersecting perpendicular lines that can be expressed as an inverted T marking on garment panels in some fabric specimens. The percentage skewness is obtained by how much the inverted T has distorted. After laundering, a right angle marking ruler is placed with one leg of the ruler placed along the line YZ so that the vertical second leg passes up through point B. 
A new benchmark is drawn along the perpendicular on line YZ. The intersection of the new benchmark and the line YZ identifies point A prime. The length of the line AA prime is measured and recorded to the nearest tenth of an inch or smaller increment. This distance is the displacement of the right angle. The length of line AB is also measured and recorded. Finally, the skewness to the left or right is indicated. The percent skewness in this method is a simple proportion of the amount of the displaced distance of point A as defined by AA prime to the length of the vertical line segment AB. Skewness is reported to the nearest 0.1%. The equation used is as follows. AA prime is divided by AB and multiplied by 100 to give the percent change in skewness. In this example, line AA prime was 0.425 inches in length and line AB was found to be 18.85 inches. Therefore, the percent skewness is 0.425 divided by 18.85 multiplied by 100 and equals 2.3% skewness. An important factor in skewness is that the longer the garment, the more obvious the skewness. This illustration shows a couple of pairs of knit pants made from the same fabric and having the 3% skewness for both pairs. Normally, this level of skewness is considered acceptable. Pair A has an inseam of 10 inches, while pair B has an inseam of 30 inches. Therefore, the side seam shown for A is displaced 0.3 inches. The side seam for B is displaced 0.9 inches. Pair B appears to have much more skewness. However, the percentage change is the same. This example shows that panel lengths in garments may appear to be worse than the actual skewness measured.